All right, what's up guys? Peter Jaguar is here again. We've got something different and special here today. NFL playoff predictions. I designed a bracket and we're going to go through and pick every single game all the way up to the Super Bowl. Obviously, this is tough. A lot of things can change. So please don't hold me to this and I'm probably not expecting to get a ton right. But we are going to go through and see how we do. So let's get started. Okay, first matchup for this wild card round, it is Panthers Cardinals. Panthers backed into the playoffs with the NFC South being terrible this year. Well, the Cardinals started hot, and then, of course, Carson Palmer went down. Drew Stanton went down. So they are starting Ryan Lindley at quarterback, and the Panthers also get home field advantage despite being the worst team throughout the regular season. I am leaning towards them, and that is going to be my pick because of the quarterback issues in Arizona. However, I'm not too confident about this one. I feel like it's going to end up a close game, and one or two plays could shake it up either way. Next, on the other side, we have an AFC North battle with Baltimore at Pittsburgh. The Bengals did also make the playoffs, so the division is sporting three playoff teams this year. But anyhow, a good matchup. These teams always go head-to-head. Haloti -head. Nada is returning for the Ravens, which should help. And one potential issue is that Le'Veon Bell will not be available for this matchup in Pittsburgh. Looks like Ben Tate will be the replacement. I still like their offense a lot. Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown have been playing great recently. So I am going to give them the nod in this one. And I do think they are the type of team that could pick fighter and keep rolling throughout the playoffs. Our other AFC wildcard matchup is Bengals-Colts, and this one's really interesting because of the differences in the quarterbacks. Andrew Luck, very clutch and successful in most big games, led a huge comeback against the Chiefs in the playoffs last year, while Andy Dalton tends to struggle in this type of situation, so it's going to be interesting with that. A.J. Green, doubtful at the time of this recording with a concussion. If he's available, that's definitely going to help Dalton get comfortable, and Jeremy Hill should be pretty successful, but but overall, we've got a close matchup like this, and it's tough to not go with the better quarterback, so I am going to lean with Indy. To wrap up the initial weekend of matchups, we have the Detroit Lions heading to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Ndama Kung Su initially suspended, but then that reversed, so he will be available for the top run defense in the NFL. However, they will be facing a tough test. DeMarco Murray being a beast recently, and then Tony Romo and Des Bryant also playing with great form. So it'll be interesting to see. I do think they can put up a lot of points against the Lions secondary. So I am going to give them the nod. I don't know that Stafford and Megatron can keep up, but this should be a shootout. On to the divisional round. My predictions have the Colts now taking on the New England Patriots. Pats getting a bye very strong throughout the year and earning the number one seed in the AFC. It's really hard to pick against them in this situation. I don't see luck coming into New England and upsetting these guys. Plus, the Colts really haven't been that great, like I said, against strong opponents. So we're going to roll with New England and be pretty confident. On the NFC side, it would be the Panthers taking on the Seahawks. The Panthers don't have any business being in here. They shouldn't have made the playoffs. They don't deserve to make the divisional round, only having them moving ahead because of Ryan Lindley. So we're going to take Seattle, going at home, picking up some momentum with an easy dub. The two versus three matchups are more contested though, and when Pittsburgh travels to Denver, I feel that this could be a close game either way, and you gotta think about this one in detail. Peyton Manning has been struggling, Roethlisberger has been great, and Le'Veon Bell should be back at this point in time. Another week should give him enough time to rest up. The Steelers will be on fire. Obviously, a buy is great for Peyton, and he should be studying well, seeing some film, figuring out what he wants to do, but I'm just not sure that he can perform at the same level anymore. Pittsburgh is awesome. I really love them as a deep sleeper, so we're going to have them moving ahead and advancing to the AFC Championship. Packers-Cowboys is another game with two dominant offenses, and had this one been in Dallas, I'd really be on the fence, not sure who I want to take. But if it's in Green Bay, which is what would occur with this scenario, then I'm leaning with the Packers. Rodgers and Co. should be prepared for cold, snow, whatever happens. And they are the better team. They earn this bye. They have a week's rest. I'm still not too comfortable with Romo making a deep run into the playoffs. 
So we'll take Rodgers, and they'll move ahead to play the Seahawks. It starts getting really hard to predict the matchups at this point because we don't know what injuries are going to occur, how the teams will be playing, and lots of other important factors. But anyhow, my predictions do have the Steelers taking on the Patriots for the AFC title. And this was one I did have to think about a lot. As I've been saying throughout the video, I love, love the Steelers. If I had to make a bet on one team to win the Super Bowl with those type of odds like they have in Vegas, the Steelers are at like 20 to 1 or something, I'd probably be rolling with Big Ben to get a third one. But I don't know in this game. Whether they can take on New England, who is having an easy matchup against the Colts and having a bye even the week before that, they should be more prepared. The Steelers could be that team that is picking up momentum and nobody wants to face. But I think we're going to edge towards Brady. Gronk going to be very tough to defend. I don't think there's anyone on Pittsburgh who can cover him. So we'll take the Patriots to win the AFC. But who will they face in the Super Bowl? Well, of course, the winner of Seahawks-Packers, but that's not the easiest to decide either. Big matchup for quarterbacks, running backs, and heck, even the defenses will be interesting. Rodgers with Jordy Nelson, Eddie Lacy, and all those guys taking on the Legion of Boom, trying to avoid having too many turnovers. Whoever wins the turnover battle is likely to come out on top in this game. And I have a little more faith in Rodgers to be productive and avoid too many mistakes. He's only thrown a few picks this year. Lacey shouldn't have to fumble and hopefully will be reliable for them. The Marshawn can also put in some work and wear down the Packers defense. So ultimately, it's most likely going to come down to who can hold on at the end. And be clutch, and I'm going to have to say that I'd rather have Aaron Rodgers trying to put some points on the board, even if it's against the Legion of Boom, than Russell Wilson. Nothing against Wilson, but I don't know how the Seahawks receivers and all are doing right now. We're going to say the Packers are able to advance through. Seahawks home field advantage has not been quite as strong. No fail Mary this time. Packers coming to the Super Bowl. So here we are for Super Bowl 49 Patriots Packers. This would be a rematch of something we had earlier in the year where the Packers defeated the Patriots 26-21 at home. I don't want to read into it too much because obviously a lot has changed. But one thing to note, Rodgers did a great job spreading the ball around. He threw for nearly 400 yards. Guys like Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, Jordy Nelson, James Starks, Eddie Lacy, Andrew Corliss, all catching at least a couple passes while Brady was primarily targeting Rob Gronkowski and Julian Adelman in addition to Brandon LaFell. But he was more narrowed in his targets. The Packers played a very clean game all around, not a single turnover, while the Patriots did the same. So in this case, it's really going to come down to who makes less mistakes Who's going to be big at the end? And it should be a very exciting one. Could definitely go to either side. And one or two if he plays a pick six here. An unlucky fumble there is most likely what would determine the game. Because it is most likely going to end within a score or two. But with all that considered, I am going to take the Packers. Stronger offense. I like Rodgers more than Brady. For this Super Bowl, I'd rather have Lacey than LeGarrette Blunt or any of those other guys in terms of a power back. And then also having so many more weapons. Rodgers is going to be able to do more. Brady's narrow, but even though the Patriots have a strong secondary, I feel like the Packers can move the ball around, do some different things, show them different looks, and still be able to put points on the board. So it is going to be close, but I am going to take the Green Bay Packers winning Super Bowl 49. 27 24 and obviously the score is kind of random and i don't know about that but we are taking the packers here is the full bracket and that is gonna be it for the video so thank you for watching stay tuned for more videos leave a like if you enjoyed this video and hearing my predictions subscribe for more nfl and madden content let me know in the comments section what you think this Super Bowl matchup is going to be and who you have winning. I'm curious to see who you guys think, and it's really tough to predict at this point. But anyone who gets it right, kudos to you. I'll come back and look at the comments once that game is over. But anyway, guys, I'm out. Peace.